evening viewers, thank you for tuning in. I am Jemima Pekas, your host for this evening's show. Uh, first up, we will look at the today's front page. Welcome back. Um, so I paid a visit to the Soweto informal market where we get our um, um, our uh, dose of kapana on a um, uh, regular basis often. And uh, during uh, this visit, uh, the uh, city police chief, Abraham Kanime, um, spoke to some of the informal traders there to brief them on how things should be done going forward now the government has lifted the lockdown on um, to cater for, uh, for some informal traders. Please have a look. It's just to put um, the, the market in a more hygienic condition. We are going to... This morning we are busy with the demarcating. We are going to, pay, to repaint everything so that we can uh, bring it into a better condition. Then, uh, as you can see, they are now busy cleaning their stands. Yesterday they were washing the floor. We disinfected. So we want at the end, when we restart the day to be announced, everything should be really on a presentable condition where all measures are in place. We are still going to, to, to put up lane, lanes for social distancing. All the traders will be issued with the maskers. What we are trying to do is to make sure that we fully 120% com comply with the measures in terms of the regulations. Welcome back again. So there's quite an interest on how things are done now that we are trying to go back to normal, um, to as normal as possible, uh, given the uh, this coronavirus outbreak. So my colleague uh, uh, Ohone Klahed um, also paid a visit to one of the informal uh, markets in Ventuk today, where he, uh, you can see for yourself what he has experienced. Say again. Those money in which people were in these in those days when there was a lockdown. They had to, to come with other money for certain business activities. People should come from the central market. So we feel bad for the situation for all transit. Because some of us were just we are not the workers were just spending on business. So we like Actually affected badly because people just said us to call from market to other students because of this disease of the country with the mass COVID 19. And we've been like food for a month now without working. And then, you know, the lack of window, the space, everything is costing money. Plenty of money we not use. When our money is get finished, we are running out of money. Now. We are Totally with the battery. Yeah, we are waiting to the market to open these things, but we don't know when. So, we are still waiting. Our thoughts on the lockdown? Well, we, we, we must stay at home and stay safe. Uh, for us who decided to come and help out, uh, just to make the place a bit uh, more bearable and more health safety. So we, we, we decided to do so, but also taking into consideration that we, we are using the necessary precautions in terms of the mask and safety gears and so forth. And, uh, but otherwise, the, 
the lockdown has just come as a it's an unforeseen challenge in terms of us who are small business owners. We are closed down. Uh, one of the other thoughts on our mind is to perhaps might, we might relinquish our employees if it so happens that we do not have enough sufficient finances. But otherwise, we continue to hope for the best. Uh, we continue to hope for the best for the 750 that is coming. A lot of people have gotten, some have not gotten. So, um, yeah. So that's what we are hoping. And we hope Welcome back once again. So as we all know, Namibians are at the edges of their chairs because of a lack of, uh, well, we don't have alcohol because uh, the lockdown has um, also led to shabings being closed or at least, well, completely closed. Um, and uh, you can uh, not access alcohol anyway. And because of this, we brought in my colleague Ochone Tlahe again, brought in um, Members from the Namibia Informal Traders and Shabin Workers Union, including its Secretary General, Mr. Matthias Stefanis, who discussed and who raised some issues around the issue around um, the sale of alcohol. Please have a look. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Ukhane Kache, and joining me in studio tonight is Matthias Stefanis of the Namibia Informal Traders and Shabin Workers Union, who will be sharing his thoughts on the on the lockdown that was announced by government last month. Good evening and welcome to the studio, our studio, Matthias. Yes, uh, good evening, sir. Yes, to start off with, uh, government imposed a state of a state of emergency and a lockdown and a lockdown sub subsequently followed this the state of emergency. Now we've seen that informal traders have had to stop trading. What is your view of this uh, suspended trading for informal traders and Shabin workers who have now lost their income? Yeah, so well, uh, thank you again. Uh, when we look on the state of emergency, it's a proclamation done through the Article 26 of the Namibia Constitution. It's a provisional of the Constitution. Uh, but when it's come to the lockdown, uh, and then in terms of the informal business, it's mm -hmm. really affecting this business because uh, uh, they never, they, instead before the lockdown, they're supposed to have a mesh in place to say the people in the informal trade, let's say the public public market, they should be remain in operating so that they also be provided with the sanitize, a sanitizer that they can use when their customer come in the market. But as we're speaking now, these people, are, we, there is no income for the informal business in, anymore. And then we are still waiting, which is supposed to be, uh, this informal business supposed to op uh, open official today, but up to date I was at uh, Okuriangava uh, stop and shop uh, to congene public market, but still on the lockdown. And then when you look on this, uh, it's really, uh, uh, the government need to make uh, this thing the uh, agent so that people are losing out uh, comparing to what uh, the people are going to benefit at this moment. Mm. Um, I visited uh, the single quarters market like you visited uh, Tukonjeni market and when I was there I noticed that they were still busy constructing. Now this is keeping, this is obviously keeping informal traders out of work at the moment. What would you see being done to sort of uh, ensure that informal traders can return to business as soon as possible? Yeah, because uh, uh, the pandemic about the corona, COVID-19, uh, the issue is about uh, the most is hygienic that uh, needed. Uh, now I see the preparation of these people are busy cleaning the public market. Mm -hmm. They are playing in uh, and then just for, to prepare for it to be ready uh, for trading. Uh, and then I don't know what was the delay that read not the market to well, the public market not to open today. I don't know what's the delay. Maybe there's something that uh, was not yet. They are not done cleaning, or maybe they plan something different. Uh, how do you feel about this delayed um, start to informal traders uh, opening their businesses again? Uh, no, no, this is uh, just too bad for our uh, domestic product, uh, which is the read our software economy. These people that are uh, uh, selling the public market, they are the ones that uh, make our money circulating within the country. Unlike the business which is in operation, they are 
one is a madnation a company that we always not interested in that because we as we as we know they take the profit back to their home country but they are the one now in operation uh, on the condition of a social service but in the one way around we end up not having even the money in the country that's a, but if you could have money circulating within our own people then we can also read our economy to grow uh, your union also represents Shabin workers and Shabins are currently closed because there's a ban of the sale of alcohol and we also find that some cooker shops are also closed as a result of this measure. Now this obviously also affects them. What do you want to see coming from government because these people are also losing income as far as, as long as the um, lockdown drags on? Yeah, exactly. When you look on the, the bar uh, the bars are all closed uh, and then we want the, the government to review this and uh, and then we uh, the social distance so that uh, our request would be that uh, let the people operating at least four hours in a day and then uh, uh, when the way people are buying alcohol or liquor they should no one come together the gathering the gathering should know you only come and buy and you go home you cannot drink at the at the place it, it should be only applied to say once you buy what you want and then you go drink home not uh, to to avoid the gathering that because uh, might people end up to violating the the state of emergency which say that no one the people they are not allowed to gather uh, gather at the same time with more, uh, more than 10 people Mm. And then there's the issue of the emergency income grant. Was this, um, is this grant, has this grant been sufficient given the circumstances at the moment? Uh, so uh, this money, it's, it's helping on its way, but when it's come to the losing that we look on the product that people losing, it's, uh, it's, it's not uh, helping. Because it's difficult now for these people in the informal business to 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 it's like a starting over because your stock is a appreciable product mostly the people are selling the tom tomatoes and uh, onions they have to restart over and then this money should be not enough because some of as, as far as i know some of these people in window they get their product from katima and then uh, you know how much they are paying for, when get the uh, tomato from rundu they are paying over two thousand to to get their product in window so it means it should be really unless something new will come in uh, to assist these people to to start up their business again or as if to corrupt it may unless we say the corrupting or corrupts of the informal business and then if you look at the 750 at at this point in time would you or do you expect the government would you expect of government to increase this grant given that informal traders are still not back in business uh, uh, the government uh, um, suggested the government in, in, in at least we were uh, in increasing uh, to be two thousand to be reasonable enough for these people. So, because these people, most of these people, they have a lot of family to look after, mm -hmm. uh, uh, and then we look on the tertiary institutions. Some of these uh, businesses where there are people paying for their children. Uh, and then now they are not operating by the high institution. They are still demanding for uh, the monthly installment. And then these people, they don't have money. It's really just difficult for the people, they are survival, and then in terms of their people to make sure their kids are get uh, educated. The one referring to one at the high institutions that are still uh, in, in, in doing their classes through online. Um, some of the informal traders that, I, uh, that we were able to interview this, uh, today said that they still have to pay rent for, for the use of the facilities, particularly here in Bantu. Mm -hmm. Do you think this is fair that they should still pay rent? No, 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 no. These things, uh, uh, municipality, they must look and suspend this thing because we, we, we look, they are measure that even some banks, they are suspending the mortgage. Well, the municipality must also submit, uh, suspend these things of uh, monthly installment service because what service the people had to pay for if they are not operating? Mm. Yeah, they then generate, this is like, you can only get the money when you when, when when do business. If you don't do business, then... There's no need for these people, the municipality, they must try a way to suspend this um, monthly for a certain month if they are not ready for these people to start resuming their duty on the market. And then uh, if one looks at the formal, uh, the formal part of the economy, you find that um, many workers in that sector have access to social safety nets like social security. Would you, would you want to see a similar type of rollout for informal traders? 
uh, uh, as we have a, a motto, we say embracing the informal economy means we want to bring the balance between uh, informal and uh, informal to be uh, in the view, in, in the sense that they must be not uh, far away from each other in terms of the policy, in terms of when it's come to the social security, all the people in the informal sector must also start be registered with social security so that they can also have social protection. Uh, in the matter of different scam statements happening in the, within the industry, they also need to be covered. Now, you as the informal trade um, and shipping workers union, are you at least engaging government or the Social Security Commission to, to sort of roll out more social safety nets for, for those working in the informal sector? Yeah, exactly. Uh, we, we are busy, as, uh, we are busy uh, drafting uh, uh, the bill which is under because there is a provision are given to organizations that non-profit organization or an, indi an individual can propose any bill mm -hmm. uh, that can be uh, submitted to national assembly uh, and then uh, that bill if uh, been accepted where each stage where at first stage uh, they to uh, we call it a reading of the bill mm -hmm. to the National Assembly where the people have to, and then in that time it's also become a public document. Uh, and, and then it's not drafted yet, and whereby the second reading is when to be uh, debated in the National Assembly. Because the first thing just to be announced in the National Assembly that this is a proposal bill submitted. As Namibi Informer Trade and Sabine Workers Union, we are ready to submit that bill uh, on the regulation of informal traders' business so that they can be also regulated uh, and then reform it in, in a way that uh, everyone can benefit. Not just like, because uh, you look on the, uh, uh, now the informal sector is the mm. most uh, sector which is employing a lot of people at the moment. Yes, yes. Well, people are facing retrenchment and they are in the former business where they only falling in to the former business. So we want to make sure that there is a clear policy that need to be put up so that it will benefit the our people in the former business. And um, how far are you in terms of putting this bill together? So we we are just waiting for COVID-19. Uh, the, once the stage of emergency declared by the president that it's ending, then the work as usual. We reach the relevant office where we start to with the office of the attorney general. Okay, that was Matthias Stefanos joining us. Thank you very much for tuning into the evening review. Good night. Thank you for having me. Also joining us from the same union was Prince Junius, who shared his thoughts on the lockdown and what he felt um, government should have gone about it. So Junius, uh, government just imposed the blanket uh, lockdown and formal traders basically went out of business. Your impressions? Yeah, thank you very much. You know, at first, you know, we as a citizen who also understand the state of emergence, mm -hmm. I had, uh, by no chance, I had to welcome the, the, the lockdown. But then the impression that uh, uh, I, that got my attention was, uh, I, I was in the impression that it was not maybe supposed to be done the way it was done. Uh, firstly, as a representative of, uh, of the public, uh, whereby it's mostly affected by the lockdown, uh, here I mean that, uh, you know, as, as NITU, we are representing the informal sector whereby there are a lot of uh, variety of businesses ongoing, such as shabins, uh, uh, street vendors, and uh, those that also works in uh, uh, car washes and uh, at the open market. When you are to look at those people, in most cases, if we are to be specific, uh, example, if I am to, 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 to bring in the people that works at the open market, those guys had a lot of stock on their table, mm -hmm. which in most cases are perishable. And uh, for the government just to come in uh, over a night to say close down without uh, considering their stock, which is, which is on their table, it was a very big hit, uh, a very big slap to those guys. Uh, considering the money that they had to invest for them to have that stock, 
delivered and uh, uh, procured from wherever the, it comes from. Uh, those guys, they really spent a lot of money, but then at the end of the day, nothing had come up because that, uh, um, that stock was left to rot. So it wasn't really a good uh, news to me representing these guys, although I really understand that it's necessary, it's for our own healthy and safety that we have to quarantine and lock down the businesses. Okay. How, how would you have felt government should have gone about it? Okay. In my views, uh, I believe that uh, the government at least must have uh, uh, alerted these guys or had was supposed to put in places good measures such as at least uh, these guys, th just the same as it was applied to other big, bigger markets in the formal sector, these people were also supposed just to have, uh, to have uh, the same uh, conditions as to when they want to sell their products, they are supposed to have uh, sanitizers and they have to perhaps put a certain uh, uh, a, a certain how do I call this now uh, whereby they can put a certain zone and mm -hmm. a no ender zone whereby if you know those guys they are selling in a very friendly uh, environment you know a, a person just sits here with a table here so it's very easy that a person can just at least adjust a certain a certain uh, boundary uh, <coughs> boundary that do not enter here you just tell me what you need and then I should uh, have them, your, your, your purchase ready and then you go back. And in addition, those people can as well use a sanitizer just like anywhere you can go. Uh, if we are to refer to other markets such as pick and pay. Uh, you sanitize, you tell me what you want, I, I prepare it for you and then give it to you or go back home. Mm. So in this case, we could have uh, avoided the the uh, the what the damage of the stock and then um in conversation one of the things you mentioned to me is uh, the, the the issue of, of of the rent that these informal traders traders um have to pay now obviously for you this is a very sensitive this is a very sensitive issue um but we must also look at the fact that the city of Vintuk needs to earn an income from 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 these facilities so in view of that should should rent be suspended or at least subsidized <laughs> Uh, honey, this this is very easy. Mm. Look, um, you speaking of the municipality or the city of Windhoek. Uh But for now, because it's the lockdown is countrywide, let's not only focus yeah, on the city of Windhoek because Ob obviously yeah. others that also um, charge an income. Yeah. Yes. So now these guys they expect to be paid, but they are forgetting that the people that are supposed to pay them they are not getting anything mm. so let's try to be human this person really need to pay you and uh this is just all the same as uh, people that are driving taxis also mm -hmm. okay you expect this person to pay a permit but then you are forgetting that it's hard out there the person is not getting anything yes, of course. it's i understand it's very very crucial that the rent and or the the fee should be given should be paid but what we should not forget is that these people are not getting anything at all their operation or their business is suspended therefore we it's either the government that had, has to come in to intervene and say mm -hmm. guys this is what you are supposed to get per month but these people we have uh strongly instructed them to be home which means there's no business and there's no money so may we have a holiday perhaps of uh, two to three months or or equivalent to the time that people will be in a, a, a lockdown okay i think this will do us some justice as well as uh, as the the, the rending is consent Okay, thank yeah. you. Thank you very much.
Welcome back once again. Uh, so, as we all know, the online education has caused quite a stir amongst the Namibian community who feels that some communities will, however, be cut out or left out, with only some be able to, uh, who should, uh, able to benefit from the online education rolled out by government now with the lockdown. And um, so we brought our, our reporter from the northern parts of the country, Eleni Nanjatu, spoke to the, uh, the executive director of the education minister, Mr. Nitzienkam, to, uh, to talk to her about um, a number of issues, including the current teaching arrangements following government's announcement uh, about the, um, on WhatsApp that some teachers will have to use WhatsApp to, t to um, conduct online training. Uh, education some schools not having money which is quite a problem in Namibia and then obviously the issue of the potential salary cuts awaiting some teachers so yeah please stay tuned and watch good morning Ms. Tienkam. morning sir how are you Hello, how are you doing? I'm doing very well. Miss mm. uh, Tienkam, you are talking to Eleni Nanjato. Who? Eleni Nanjato. Mr. Nanjato. Nanjato, yes. I'm a journalist for Namibian Sun newspaper. Yes. Miss um, Tienkam, I would like to engage you re regarding the, the issue of uh, um, education. Uh, we understand that uh, um, teachers. Uh, uh, resume their duty on Monday, and um, there is uh, uh, a bit of uh, um, things not uh, being well understood uh, by either by the parents. Uh, sometimes also when uh, uh, parents are saying that when they are approaching teachers, they also don't really giving the the the, the, the quite uh, satisfactory answers to them. Mm -hmm. um, uh, mm -hmm. This are uh, issue now regarding as to what role. Are the teachers doing at the moment and the parents what is expected from the parents um, some are saying that uh, the the period that is given from uh, monday until the six is just uh, um, for the teachers to prepare themselves uh, um, uh, going through their scheme of work uh, drawing up coming coming up with their with their uh, um, uh, 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 plans um, Okay, and, and then uh, some of them are saying that no, it's to create WhatsApp groups and then teachers uh, load uh, um, lesson for the learners so that uh, um, teachers can, uh, I mean, parents can teach their, their, their kids. Um, Is it proper for you to come to my office or do you want us to do this on the phone? Because I've got a line of, uh, a series of meetings lined up. Uh, can um, you, do you want me to respond to you now? Yes, can you just respond to me, ma'am? Okay, mm -hmm. so the, the period mm -hmm. from um, the 20th of April mm -hmm. um, until over the lockdown, mm -hmm. there is a preparedness um, period. Mm -hmm. Now, most of the schools, be they private or mm -hmm. public schools, have already, before the 20th, while they were on holiday, mm -hmm. most of them already put preparedness plans in place. That mm -hmm. is the reality. So there are some schools that are now at this stage more advanced than others. Mm -hmm. What we do encourage, and we will still send out, um, hopefully by this week, full directive. Um, mm -hmm. What is envisaged to happen and what we've communicated is that we are now like all the other countries in the world. There are 1.5 billion learners and students currently out of school. Mm -hmm. Youth groups, children included in 191 countries. Maybe it's just one of them. So what are we doing to remedy the situation? We are saying, let us look at our existing resources. Mm. A child's biggest resource is the teacher. Mm -hmm. First and foremost, with mm. his or her expertise, mm -hmm. qualification, their years of experience, and their love for the children. So that the teacher is the child's biggest resource. Secondly, mm. We are saying what alternative teaching and learning strategies can we embrace, okay? Mm -hmm. So during this period, even the ministry itself are working around the clock with NBC, with other um, uh, media houses, 
to report today our teachers from private and public schools in commerce region are uh, capacitated how to do video lessons and radio lessons for junior primary children. And very soon we will run with radio, which we know has at least 96% coverage in the country. Okay? And 79% of people still prefer to use the radio. It's immediate. You know, you get instant um, access to information. So we're working on schedules with the NBC, with all the 10 local radios. Mm-hmm. They're working on uh, finalizing uh, MOUs between us. So mm-hmm. that's the one part. The other part is radio, is, is a television lessons, okay? Mm-hmm. And then the third part, which we are embracing also, is NAMCO. Mm-hmm. Something our current memorandum of understanding with NAMCO to produce for us learning materials for grade 8 up to grade 12. Mm-hmm. All right? Yes. Then the, the other part that we are embracing, we are saying that as much as we embrace um, a digital learning, mm-hmm. radio, television, you know, what about the child who doesn't have access to that radio now, mm-hmm. or the child who does who miss out on the television lesson, or the child who does not even have a television in the in, in, in the village, mm-hmm. or there's only one television in that area, because we all we are also aware that 18% of our schools currently that do not have electricity. So we are too aware of all our challenges. But what we're saying is, can we make use of what we already have? Mm-hmm. So the fourth thing that we are doing is mm-hmm. to create learning packages for mm-hmm. our children. Mm-hmm. In order to create a learning package for our children, the teacher and the parent will need to communicate. Mm-hmm. They will need to establish where is the child. Mm-hmm. Is the child still under lockdown in Harda? Mm-hmm. while the child is supposed to be in the book. Are you with me? Yes. I'm How right. do we reach that child? Mm-hmm. So the teacher will communicate and establish what is the nearest school to the child mm-hmm. and then work col- collaboratively with other teachers. So what we envisage to see is that there will be lots of preparation going on. The teacher must establish contact with the parent and then the schools will have to come up with learning packages for the children. Now, in the regions, we have already identified what we call resource and production hubs. And these hubs will be open. For example, in Oshana, you've got the library resource with mm-hmm. 40 computers. Are you with me? Yes. So while we can only allow 10 people to go in, we will work out a schedule and we will share with the teachers to say, you know, come and prepare and use the facilities that we have here. Come and prepare packages also if need be for the children here because we've got the photocopy mm-hmm. facilities. Mm. So then we need to get a distribution point for mm. those learning packages to the children. Mm. Now, this is what we call a, a transition period. Uh, with the Ministry of Education that still need to uh, make submissions to cabinet, we will only be able to inform the nation uh, when the schools will be reopening for learners when we have a clear go-ahead and a full responsive and preparedness plan in place mm-hmm. that has been caught by the Ministry of Health, that it is now um, safe to bring in learners, and then we will have to, as a country, we will have to see that we prioritize, for example, first and foremost, grade 11 and 12. Mm-hmm. Do, do you see what I'm saying? Yes. So those will be your points of priority. Meanwhile, mm-hmm. our key emphasis is it is difficult times Mm. we understand we understand that there's a lot of confusion Mm. it usually takes a few days to work through the confusion to become focused again Mm. so we are asking everybody parents and teachers to please remain focused Mm. to to engage each other in a respectful manner Mm. and find a a way that learning can continue and that the household that the parent eventually is also supported to create a safe space and a learning space Mm -hmm. for the child where it is possible Mm -hmm. in the household. Do you understand? So there's still a lot of advocacy, Mm -hmm. a lot of education that must be done. Mm -hmm. But for now, we concentrate on what are the best practices and regional directors already. We are now also assessing how many 
of the principles of the duty station. Do mm. you understand? Because mm. they have access to the offices, they have access to the production hubs, they have access to the keys, they have access to the to the telephone. So if there is a need for us to revisit our decision and allow key principles to return to the duty stations, we will do that because the the power has been granted by the Secretary to Cabinet to regional directors. Mm -hmm. So this week, it is dedicated to assessment, mm -hmm. preparation, mm -hmm. and to find workable solutions in specific uh, regions, circuits, schools, and communities. Mm -hmm. So, but like I said, there are more, there are other schools. For example, even Onawa, Mm. In Omasaki, it would be good if you speak to the principal. Mm. They have already registered online more than 400 children. Mm. Now they, they have to engage because they have been working on a Google Classroom already since 2014. Mm. What they need to do now is to see the production of the learning packages. Mm. So, um, yes, it's a challenging period, mm. uh, but the ministry is doing its level best with its development partners, with all these corporate, you know, um, companies coming on board and entities, mm. we are now seeing how best we can move forward. Okay. None of us know how long this may continue. Mm -hmm. For now, we call this a transition period. It is not based on examination, and parents must understand that. Mm. When the schools, one or the other time, reopen again, we start afresh. Mm. And then we make sure that all children will be on par and no time should be left behind. That is our key message. Okay. And I hope it's helpful to you now. Okay, uh, ma'am. I, I just now want to introduce. There, there is also um, now uh, some 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 schools are saying now, as you you put you indicated, it's uh, um, the issue of uh, contributing the, the the packages and stuff, where which have to be either collected somewhere or being dropped somewhere at the at the at the at the, 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 the the selected uh, um, uh, resource uh, distribution uh, point. Yeah. Yes. But some schools are saying apparently. Um, uh, with regarding to the money that uh, were given to the schools uh, for for the uh, last year academic year, which uh, they are saying that it was just a fifty dollar per child, they are no. saying they are finding it difficult now to do okay. all these things because apparently uh, it, some of them in their coffers there is no money already, uh, even though the money was paid in January. So let me explain. Mm. So we understand that schools have their budgets. Mm. They have set aside the money for specific issues and mm. payments are still to be made. Mm. But that's why it's important, and the instruction was very clear to our regional directors, mm -hmm. make an assessment of the available funds in each and every school. Mm -hmm. Draw up the Excel sheet so that we know in Oshana region we have X amount of money. Mm. Determine then how X amount of money, a, a certain percentage, be it 10 or 20%, Mm. of that fund should be allocated for um, either teaching and learning materials or for cleaning materials. You must understand that we are currently dealing with a very unprecedented situation mm. and that we're looking into our existing resources at the very moment. Mm. Okay? We also have many schools that are still sitting with huge amounts of money. Mm. And we're saying if they can't spend the money, then we need to to to, put, to keep that money into a pool mm. and work towards the common good of all the other schools in that in that um, region. Mm. But the directors are very clear on that one. You can, if you feel like, you can speak to Ms. Amukana mm. in Oshana or any other director that you wish to talk about. The mm. situation will vary. You must also know that we we don't have the ceilings yet from the national budget, mm. so it is difficult for us now to determine how much money will we put in the region in mm. terms of preparedness. Mm. So we can do the planning, but the actual execution will truly come when we see precisely in the region mm. what are the existing funds, mm. um, what are the key areas that the school should still adhere to and pay the, um, do the payments, mm. and then we take it from there. And like I said, from a national level, we are working with some of the media houses in the production of materials mm. so that we can have that distributed at least for in the next few weeks, at least we focus on pre-primary and grade one for now. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, now, uh, now, my my last question, ma'am, because you said you are you 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 are busy. Um, there is also some uh, um uh, uh section of the teachers who are saying that no, um, this uh, whole arrangement was just uh, brought up 
to make sure that uh, teachers are busy to avoid a situation whereby the government is paying them while they are not doing anything. And then they are saying that if they are not uh, are going to do anything, the government might uh, be, um, the, if the situation go uh, and then they, they are just sit at home without doing anything, they might cut their salaries. It's, uh, is, is there anything of such nature as well? I wish to state very clearly mm -hmm. that teachers, like all public servants, mm -hmm. Okay. We are being fully employed. Mm. Until there is absolutely no discussion. Mm. And we must remember that the office of the Prime Minister mm. is our, employ uh, our, our employer. Mm. So the ministry cannot unilaterally make decisions and will never do that. Mm. What the ministry is trying to do is to bring back a sense of productivity, mm. a sense of order, a mm. sense of purpose and focus mm. for us to work through the challenges of digital material, mm. of e-learning, and of producing learning packages. Mm. We cannot just sit and expect education not to continue. Mm. And the teachers are gainfully employed. But they are very creative, they are very resourceful, and I, I think we should not allow a few dissident voices mm. to, to distract us from doing what is right and what is just. The Namibian Constitution makes provision that every child has the right to education. Mm. And there's a teacher responsible for between 25 in a pre-primary up to sometimes 42, sometimes up to 50 children in a specific subject for which he or she has qualified and has the teaching expertise. I can understand that it's difficult times, but I can also say with their resourcefulness, teachers can do a lot and we should entrust them to provide us and help us find the solutions. Mm. Okay. That's all I can say at this stage. Okay. I absolutely deny mm. that there are any discussions around teacher salaries. Teachers must remember, just like all other public servants, mm. who find their ways and means to work away from home, it's the same. The education must continue. No child must be left behind. Every child matters, irrespective of their child sits on a farm school or in a farmhouse. Many of the farmers have come forward and said, look, just tell us where your distribution point is and we'll pick and we will have homeschooling for up to up to 10 if need be. Mm. So there's so much positive responses out today. And we all acknowledge, sir, that we don't have all the answers, but we're working towards solutions. So it will be very good if everyone can just please embrace that these are difficult times, but it's also times where with our creativity and resourcefulness, we can find solutions. Oh. And nothing is perfect. No solution is a perfect solution. As you rightly said, even the learning packages, you know, not to leave a child behind, that has got uh, challenges of its own. Mm. Okay. I hope it, is, it has been helpful to you. Yes, it has been helpful, and I thank you very much, ma'am. Oh, you're most welcome, sir. Thank uh, is the name Emmanuel? Eleni Nanjato. If you can just text me okay. your full name All right. um, and surname, please. All right. Thank you very much. Sir. Thank you very much. Man. You're welcome. Bye bye. Thank you once again for tuning in. Wow, that was a full bouquet today. Please join us again tomorrow evening.